going on? This is Dave Tilly. I'm here at Champion PT in Boston. And um, today I want to shoot a really important video for uh, probably the most important project that I'm working on with research and gymnastics and, and kind of different fields. But um, something that I think is going to be really gold standard in gymnastics moving forward, uh, the concept of a workload ratio um, and tracking volume more objectively so we know how much are we doing? Uh, is it too much, too little? Where is the performance peak going to come with periodization? So I've been working a lot with Tim Gavitt's research and some other great researchers to try to come up with a system for gymnastics. And what I want to do is walk you through some of the challenges that gymnastics faces in applying this research and then walk you through an example of what I'm using um, to kind of create these systems for our gym and for clients that I work with. Uh, just because the problem with research is by the time we get it formulated and put together in a, in a good package, it takes two years to kind of get out through the validation process. So I'd rather just kind of give you guys a heads up of what I'm working on now so that we can, we're gonna create a tool for people to use and that when I give it to people, they understand what we're going for. So the concept of a workload is essentially how much are we doing in one session, one week compared to other weeks before that. So we're not spiking training volume, right? There's a few common patterns that are issues in the research for what increases the risk of injury, but then also might what might predict performance, uh, you know, being plateaued or something like that. So number one is if you have an unplanned spike in your workload. So say all of a sudden you come off a break or um, you're worried about a meet coming up and you all of a sudden just jump the volume up through the roof to get ready. Well, if that was an unplanned spike, it might cause an issue and the volume might too much, be too much. A lot of pounding might cause some, some stress fractures in the, in the shins. A lot of back bending might cause some lower back issues or just general fatigue might be an issue too. Okay, unplanned, I said this because there are times when you want to push the athletes hard to get an extra training adaptation, right? But that's part of a six week cycle. It's not just like all of a sudden you come in one day and you go really, really hard for a couple days. So that's number one. Number two, which is a, a common misconception that Tim's done a really good job of kind of uh, putting to the side is that uh, not building a high enough workload, right? So sometimes people think only if I go too, too much, I'm gonna get hurt. But if you don't do enough training to prepare yourself for the thing you're doing, that can also be an issue when you all of a sudden get a weekend competition or you have a high training week. So we do wanna build people up to a high training load, but it's safely and intelligently through the, the up and down uh, kind of oscillation of workloads. So that's number two. And then number three is not having some system of communication between your athletes, coaches, parents, medical providers to talk about workloads, but then also not individualizing their training based on what they need, right? That's a huge problem when somebody maybe has a little bit of an injury and they kind of come down and workload by a medical provider and they don't get ramped back up with communication that can kind of cause some issues to pop up. So these three things are challenging because in gymnastics, right, it's a super unique sport. And, and running or, uh, you know, some different weightlifting, we can actually measure the pounds or the miles or things like that. In gymnastics, there's an infinite amount of surfaces and things you can do. So that's the number one thing is there's a lot of different skills going on. We need a better system to track this, and which is what I'm getting into later. Um, number two is it's really hard to track these things because there's so much happening in the gym that it's really tricky to kind of stay involved with how many skills someone's doing. That's impossible. And then number three is that we have such young athletes that it's really different for how they're going to respond based as, you know, maybe an adult who's post puberty or is 20, completely different. So we have to find a system that calculates these things. So now moving on here, there's two things that we want to look at. We want to look at the external workload. Okay. So that might be the miles run. Right, but in our sport, it might be the number of repetitions that you do, the number of routines you do, or things of that nature. That's the actual objective thing you can measure. Okay, the internal workload is how an individual athlete responds to that workload. So the same thing, if I kind of come in here, Dan behind the camera, if we both do the same workout, but he had a really great day and I had no sleep, I didn't eat well, uh, I feel like crap because I got a big test coming up and I haven't uh, you know, prepared myself. I might think that workout is a 9 out of 10, whereas Dan might think that workout's a 4 out of a 10, just because of different stressors in our life. Okay, so internal and external are what we're trying to track and a system together. Okay, and then lastly, what we're going to do here is for gymnastics, because we can't actually count the reps and there's so many things going on, we're going to use a weighting of intensity. Okay, so a light one weight might be warming up, just doing drills, okay? A two might be a more medium intensity doing skills. Number three might be a very hard uh, workout. Maybe you're doing half routines, you're doing a lot of volume. Or number three, you might do the actual top end fifth gear, which is a full routine back to something else or a really hard conditioning or something like that. We're gonna use these weights to kind of get an accurate measurement of these workloads, which is what I'll talk about in this next half of the video. Okay, so taking all this information, this is the system that I'm working with right now. And don't look at the numbers, I'll walk you through them. But this is the system that I'm using, I'm giving to a lot of other 
uh, clubs and countries to start you know, using as part of their training, and we're going to start to have technology that tracks these things. So what we're doing is we're going to look at three different things. Number one is we're going to look at the amount of time that we're on that event. Okay, So when we warm up for 30 minutes, we do 45 minutes of bars, 45 minutes of um, vault, forgive me, then bars, balance beam, floor, physical prep. Obviously, this is a women's artistic example, but I didn't want to go too overwhelming. Okay, so that's going to be the time of the actual event because each of these workouts might be less or more stressful depending on what the coach programs based on how the athletes feel at the beginning or the end of the workout. This is how we're going to specify this for the actual event, right? Some athletes struggle a lot on one event, not on others, more stress, more reps, things like that. So we take that. Okay, the RPE is the rate of perceived exertion. That is how much the athlete reports as a difficulty. So a zero out of 10 is the easiest work I've ever done in my life. 10 out of 10 is I am completely dead, exhausted. That was the hardest thing I've ever done. Okay, so that's how we combine the internal and external. A coach prescribes a workout in a domain, right, and an athlete responds to it. That tells us how the athlete is responding to three routines or to a series of sled pushes or things like that. Okay, so we have the time. We have the athlete reporting an RPE, okay, and this would probably be done at the end of a practice in a quick little journal or on an app or something like that, not during the actual event, okay? So taking those, okay, two, maybe the warm-up's a piece of cake, vaults moderately hard because you're fresh at the beginning of a workout. As the workout goes on, you develop more uh, fatigue, right? And then lastly, floor maybe is really hard and you had really hard physical preparation that day, so that was exhausting for the athlete, okay? So then we take these weights, lastly, and we measure based on what we prescribed. Say the coach only does a very light warm up. Okay, that's a two because it's only a medium intensity of workout. Okay, on vault bars and beam, and maybe we're doing half skill or half routine combinations, a bunch of series of things together. It's pretty stressful. It's pretty hard, but it's not as hard as doing a full routine. Again, we weight those as a three because they're hard, but they're not top gear. And then lastly, maybe you do a really hard physical preparation day where you do a ton of exercises, a lot of volume. Okay, it's very, very demanding. That's a four. So these are going to be weighted more because they're more stressful. You add up all these numbers and you get an arbitrary gymnastics unit. Okay, so say the warm up was 120 vault, and those don't mean anything relative to other sports. That's based on the gymnastics specific example. And that's what the workload data tries to do is get something specific to the sport. So what you do is you tally up all these, and again, these would be calculated by you know something automatically, and it gives you a number right here for the day. Okay, this 5,025 is a very specific uh, number to the athlete for that day based off the external and the internal workload. Okay, so we know for that athlete, that's about their workload for the day, okay? And now I'm not gonna go through all the numbers, but in a spreadsheet or what I've done before, and it seems to work out very, very well, is you go through the whole week and you plan what events you do, you kind of put those things in advance, and it pumps out a number at the end of the week for an arbitrary weekly training load. So maybe 20,000 units if the athlete trains five days a week and they have a variety of things they do. And what you do is you take that weekly training load and you say, okay, for the whole week, that was your number. And then you start comparing that week to week to week. You say, what is this number compared to the average of the last two weeks? That gives you what's a very popular thing in the research is the acute to chronic workload ratio, okay? That tells you how much you're doing in one week relative to the weeks before, right? So all of these numbers are very, very helpful if you communicate with the athlete and they have a journal and you can understand how much you're dosing somebody, how they're responding. This is probably the most important thing that's gonna happen in gymnastics is developing a system where this is normal and it's part of what we do and it's not just randomly applying training load and hoping that people respond. You can use this to track the whole year, your meet season, year to year, month to month, and it's extremely helpful if you can get your head around it. So this is kind of the entire thing. And I'm gonna have a lot more resources and webinars we do, but I wanted people to have a quick little five to 10 minute video to really understand where gymnastics is going, again, at an international landscape, all levels and ages, tramp, artistic, rhythmic, recreational to elite. Everybody can use a variation of this system. Okay, so check out online if you wanna learn more, but I hope that helps.